Welcome back, everybody. This week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. Like us on Facebook, very simple, facebook.com slash This Week in America, facebook.com slash This Week in America. Back with us on the program, as mentioned, Joshua Coburn, life coach, youth motivational speaker, author, corporate oddity. Joshua Coburn recently released his acclaimed book, Inspiration On Demand, a unique one-stop essential guide for motivation in work and life. He was on our program a while back talking about that book. Joshua, welcome to the program. And I say corporate oddity in a loving way because you are in the corporate world and dressed a little bit different probably than most of the people you're dealing with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> being heavily tattooed, I stand out a little bit uh, in, the, in the office. That's for absolute sure. We wanted to talk in the program today about something exciting you've got going, and that Josh was spending a lot of time now touring the United States as part of his Manners and Motivation Tour. He's talking to students, and I think several of the reasons he is so effective and really can relate with students all across the country. First of all, your appearance. Second of all, you've been there. When you're talking to kids about the problems they're going through, hasn't been that many years ago. You were going through most of those same problems. Let's start, first of all, with an appearance, an interesting newspaper headline after you appeared in a school. It said, uh, quoting a student, you're not what I expected. I assume you get that a lot, that people are like, wow, this isn't a guy in a suit coming out and talking over our heads. Here's somebody that we can relate to. It, exactly. I think a lot of times uh, when speakers come in, uh, there's a certain expectation. And I'm definitely generally not what's expected. And it really depends on if there's promotion leading up to it or if I'm a total surprise because the way we do things is, is much different on this tour. And I think the biggest thing I saw as a student sitting back watching things when I was a kid was that I couldn't relate. Yes, they were going through things. They were talking about positive stuff, but it just didn't hit home the way I kind of hoped it would and longed for it to. And I guess it was really my goal to give kids and students the experience that I never had. And that's kind of where we're at. That's what we're giving them. And after the first kind of test that we did, the impact was so huge, not only on them, but on me, that we knew that we were going to be continuing this all across the U.S. Well, you're out of the ordinary, as I mentioned, that I can remember years and years ago when I was a student and the people would come in. And again, it's like, you sort of look at it as this is getting us out of class time. I may not get anything out of this, but I can horse around with the guys, the gals, whatever, and I get I get out of class time. When you present yourself to schools, do you get any of that sort of traditional thinking that like, wow, what can this guy come in and offer to students? Uh, yeah, both um, from the faculty and from like student leadership, student councils and stuff like that. It's, it's really pretty interesting how – it kind of develops because very often it's the students that bring it to uh, the school officials rather than as it used to always be for me, the officials or principals or superintendents, um, PTAs, et cetera, bringing someone in for the students. So it's really been organic and knowing that students want this from the beginning is really what's developed this into something cool and different. And I mean, there's other opportunities too to where we can, go to schools um, for virtually nothing, which I'm sure we'll get to. But uh, it's really interesting that really the students are latching on up front. So I love the fact that when I come in, it's, it's already established that it's going to be new. It's going to be different. And as you said in the beginning, the way I look kind of puts that out up front. So, yeah, it's been really, really cool that way. I mean, Social media has done wonders for, for this tour, that's for sure. To find out information on the tour, there are several places to go. Joshua Coburn, C-O-B-U-R-N dot com, and that will give you the information. Or write to mannersandmotivation.com. It's an excellent website. It has all the information there, how your school can participate, as, as Josh alluded to, the fact that uh, the, the cost can virtually be nothing. And you've got a sponsor that we'll, we'll talk about, a, a cooperative sponsor that's working with you on this tour what is so interesting is your life. And we talked about it the last time and just to sort of encapsulate what we were talking about. So many people think when you're in school, you don't have any problems. You don't have a payroll to, to meet necessarily. You don't have a family you have to pay for a lot of problems growing up. And you understand that because you went through problems yourself. We talked about you had a, what was a happy childhood and then bingo, the family's hit with divorce and it came to the, we got to the point where even to, Depression was certainly there. Even suicide was contemplated. Yeah, absolutely. And 
it is amazing that we think that our kids don't have problems. Well, they don't have problems the way you and I may think of them, but their issues are very real and they run very, very deep and no different than anything we're dealing with. And yes, things like divorce is uh, a big issue. I mean, it's rampant across the United States. You deal with um, alcohol in the home, verbal and mental abuse. Uh, bullying is, is a big buzzword right now. Uh, and just general kind of self-worth, motivation, and kind of the want to get somewhere. A lot of kids don't have dreams or don't really realize they have dreams or they can create opportunity. So I'm here to deliver that because as you said, I was there. I was at the bottom at several points and yeah, divorce, um, suicide. We, you know, I grew up with alcoholics in, in my home and in my life and I struggled with that all the way into my thirties. So I certainly understand this and when I go to schools and, and get in front of, you know, anywhere from 500 to thousands of students, I'm there to give everything I have. I mean, it's my life. It's my darkest times. And you want to talk about overcoming a fear. I mean, standing in front of thousands of people or hundreds of people at a time and telling them the worst parts of your life, that takes a little something, but uh, it's worth every second. And I think that's what makes the experience extremely authentic. Joshua Colburn, our guest on This Week in America. His book is called Inspiration on Demand. Information on that is a website, which is uh, joshuacolburn.com, specifically tour information at mannersandmotivation.com. It's worth looking into for a school, whether you're a student there and listening to the program or you're a parent and you have children in school. And you, one of the things you, you really do is remind the kids, and this is really important, that they are not alone. Do many of them feel like they are alone? And did you, as as a teen in school, feel like you were alone? It, they were your problems. You had to deal with them. Yes. Uh, yes, on all those things. What I've really noticed is, is not only with myself, because I felt very isolated. I felt different for whatever reason. And it took me years to realize that different is good and that I should embrace those differences and then ultimately express them. And that's what's been super beneficial for me. Um, and a lot of times I think adults see kids as feeling isolated or alone, um, at least from appearance standpoint, you know, different colored hair, wearing black, you know, that kind of stereotype. I have found just as often that the academic, that the popular, you know, male or female, the jock have really super high expectations and they feel alone because no one else can identify with those types of uh, expectations and that weight they're carrying. I mean, they're expected to get an A on every test, to be valedictorian, to win the football game, the basketball game, the softball game, whatever it is. And they carry that weight with them. And they don't believe anyone else is there or has experienced it. And they also don't talk about it. And that's what I'm there to do. My exposing uh, kind of the raw nerve is really what I want kids to understand that it took me years to realize that I wasn't alone and it's time for them to realize that there's common threads as well because for the same reason that I'm depressed could be the the same reason several others but if I don't ever communicate it no one's ever going to know and help me through it and vice versa so really it's about exposing common threads uh on on the whole of what manners and motivation is about one of the things, and I mentioned before that uh, Please Line is a sponsor on the uh, Manners and Motivation Tour. Talk about that because please is a word that you used, have used in your presentation, and it happens to be a word that's used now on a very popular T-shirt line, was featured at uh, Fashion Week in Milan. It got a lot of uh, international publicity. Mm -hmm. Talk about your association with them and why this really makes sense for, for everybody. Sure. Uh, the Please Line is an amazing company that I just happened upon and I approached. And uh, I mean, they're wonderful people with great ideas. And they're looking to kind of do what I'm doing, to change people, to make lives better. And when we linked up and started discussing kind of what each other was doing, a light bulb kind of went off. And we realized that, of course, together we can reach more, which is also a big part of what I talk about. And we had a common thread, like I just mentioned, and we decided that teaming up really was the best way because ultimately 
Um, of course, it costs travel. It, it, there's you know some fees involved with getting me into schools. But I wanted to find a way to offer it up so schools could actually get me there for free or as close to free as possible. And the police line is allowing that because through them, schools and students and staff can actually develop their own clothing and through manners and motivation can raise money through the sales of that. And all profits go back to the school or the student organization. My fees are paid out of that. And what's even more cool is because the police line is so kind, they allow this to go on through the whole year, not just the time frame leading up to when I'm there and shortly after, but the entire school year, kids can develop these uh, shirt designs and sell them locally, online, um, again, to each other, and develop funds for proms and formals and, and jerseys and, and anything the school needs. And again, for the whole year, even after I'm gone. So it's it's pretty amazing program that that Please is offering and, and willing to team up with me to do. It's I, I'm so blessed when it comes to that. They're and, amazing. And this came out of a husband and wife team that decided to do something, maybe put a word back in the language that has been missing in recent times. We all know the the power of, uh, of the word please. And it's neat because on the back you can print words like love, life, forgive, cure, you can really make it a powerful message both in front of the shirt and the back of the shirt. And you can find all of that at the please And of course, link on to Josh's website, Joshua Coburn.com and manners and motivation.com. I want to talk some here in the remaining time of the program about some of the messages you take out to the, uh, to the kids. They all sit there. They all have visions. They all know what they would like to be, but the problem is, is implementing that. The problem is, is dealing with our fear of, okay, I know what I would like to be. And you break it down to the three steps. And this is sort of the route that, that you took. So it's, and you took some side roads, roads along the way. So you can <laughs> tell us the detours and how we get there. First of all, creating a plan. And that seems so simple, but for many of us, it's, it's really difficult to do. Talk about the importance of a plan and realistically getting started with that plan. Sure. Um, I think the big thing is understanding where you want to go. And you don't have to be a real realistic about where you want to go today and how you're going to get there. But you have to understand that whatever you're putting at the top of that mountain is what I usually refer to it. Um, once it's up there and you see it at the peak, then it's time while you're in the valley to uh, decide what baby steps you're going to take to get up there. And, and I usually bring up things like... Um, you know, if you want to be a doctor, or heck, if you want to just lose weight, as simple as that, it's very simple to think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do 30 pounds and then get overwhelmed and quit. And the easiest way to do it is to understand that you don't have to worry about what's on top of the mountain today. You have to worry about what you're going to eat today, what gym you could research to maybe go to and start working out. Or what college, if you're going to be a doctor, and you know exactly what classes you need, how long is it going to take, what kind of time frames you're working with. It's things like that to begin with. And create that list, because once you have that plan, you can start striking things off. And that gives you momentum and build your confidence so you can continue to climb. Well, it's and so it's, important because we all like to have lists. And you say, put, put the things down you want to accomplish, and then... Yeah cross them off and you, what you really feel like you've accomplished something, even if it's the first step on the way, but it like, okay, I am making progress. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if that portion of this is overlooked at any time, you start to feel overwhelmed. You get that anxiety feeling. I still get it. I have to break things down. Otherwise with everything I have going on, I will start to sink. And what I usually do is I go back to my list and I say, okay, this is where you need to be. This is what we focus on today. And then I move forward. Before I know it, I'm, I'm halfway through my, my plan and halfway up that mountain looking back, like, how did I get here so quickly? So, yes, creating that plan is far and away the best way to get started and to build that confidence to keep you going. Because, again, what are we, uh, 22 days into the new year when everyone's starting to toss out their New Year's resolutions? This is the time to go back to your list and say, okay, it's not about the big picture. We're dealing with the small one for right now. So you can get through this kind of funk that happens as you, you know, get a few weeks into your desired path. How important is, us, is it for us to do something 
even if it's a small step on a daily basis, but at least at the end of the day, we're a little bit closer to our goals and expectations than we were when the day began? Well, I think if you can start out the day with a goal in mind and have that purpose, because a lot of people kind of have that aimless, like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I, I don't want to get off the couch today. But if you have a purpose throughout that day, when you rest your head again, you know that tomorrow is going to be a good day because you have a reason. Today was a great day because you either succeeded or you worked as hard as you could to succeed at reaching that goal. And the closer you are to crossing that line, the more confidence you're going to gain. And if you leave things kind of out there for too long, you'll forget your confidence wanes. And yes, that starts with one day. You're either one day closer or one day farther behind. That choice is up to us. Our guest on This Week in America is Joshua Coburn. His website is Joshua Coburn, C-O-B-U-R-N.com. The website for the Manners and Motivation Tour is very simple, mannersandmotivation.com. Uh, the book is called Inspiration on Demand. It's a lot of positive affirmations. We've got uh, that past program is up on iTunes as, as well as, as YouTube. And it's, it's, it's really an excellent read because this came from not only Josh, but other people who were helping him through some difficult periods in his life. Uh, a few minutes left in the program. Uh, step two you talk about, and this I think is so important and sort of alluded to it, and that starts small. There's nothing wrong with taking baby steps to get us going in the right direction. And you talk about that we really need to to sort of celebrate each achievement to make sure that we're acknowledging, yes, we have made progress. For sure. Uh, I go back to those moments when, you know, you're working with children, young kids, and they do the simplest things and you celebrate it huge. It's, it's, it's cause for major celebration. And we lose that. I lost that, you know, growing up and Ultimately, I lost confidence in things and, and who I was and where I was going. And now as an adult, when I strike something off that list, no, I don't dance around and celebrate and get crazy, but I do take a moment to reflect and acknowledge it and know that, yeah, I did that. And it's so important because it does reaffirm that you're on that path, that you're succeeding. And success isn't you know, a million dollars today, if that's what it is, or 30 pounds or, you know, earning your doctorate or your master's. It's knowing that today I fully succeeded in what I was trying to do, whatever that is. And again, I, I mentioned when you, when you rest your head at night, you can take a moment to reflect. And, and that's another way to really reaffirm that, yeah, I can do it. I'm strong enough and I, I'm going to make it. And I think the understanding of that is huge. If you don't celebrate it, if you don't acknowledge where you've come from, when you hit a stumbling block, when you're climbing that mountain, you slide down a little bit, ultimately, you're going to let yourself continue to slide. But if you acknowledge, hey, yesterday, I nailed it. Actually, I got two things done that I didn't even intend to do. But today, I'm, I missed the mark a little bit, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep moving. That's what it takes. It takes that celebration couple minutes left. Step three, and we'll, this is something we talked about a few minutes ago, that you're in there not alone. You talk about friend up and how important that mm -hmm. is to have somebody, uh, especially a mentor. You need somebody there that's been through the process to guide you. Uh, talk about how we develop that and, and learn to rely on other people, because so often we think we're pretty much in this by ourselves. We're an island. We've got to figure it out all on our own. Exactly. I used to think that I was completely alone in, in all sorts of things. And now I try to be that, at least for kids when I'm speaking, I try to be the individual that they look to, at least at first, till I can direct them to somebody more local uh, who has been there, who's seen it, who's genuine. And when they're feeling, you know, or they're, they're feeling down and having a tough time, I can reach down and I can pull them up that mountain and, and stand with me. Um, a, a great example for me is in business. Uh, as we said, the corporate oddity stuff. I didn't know what I was getting into. I needed to learn that. And the only way was to find people way smarter than me in business and listen and be close to them, ask questions and mentor what they were doing. Ultimately, I took my own path, but I had to learn the basics and gain confidence. And that's where those small steps allowed me to gain that. And having them to rely on to say, yeah, you know, you're doing it right. Or what about this? Or maybe you should consider these things. Having that direction and, and kind of, general push 
is huge because when I am slipping, they're there to, to pick me up again and lend a hand just a bit. And without that, we're not going to fully succeed. I did a lot of things. I reached a ton of dreams alone, but I never got to the top of that mountain until I learned how to express myself and reach out to others, help them, ask for help. And now together, we're able to release my last book, Inspiration On Demand. Now together with the uh, Mel and the Please line and their generosity, you know, we're going out and doing the Manners and Motivation Tour. And with all of us together, we're getting students nationwide, thousands, to hopefully stand up in confidence and climb the mountain together. And that truly is what this is all about. Unfortunately, out of time, we'll have Josh back on the program. There has to be that magic moment when you're out in front of these students, hundreds, maybe even in excess of a thousand students, and you see so many locked into what you're saying. And obviously they're paying attention. They can relate. And what you're saying is resonating, resonating. When you walk off the stage, it has to be a great feeling that You know, I think I reached some of those kids today, and when I leave here, their lives are going to be better because of this this conversation we had. Absolutely. When I look out there and I see kids crying, it gets me even emotional now just talking about it. When I see them crying or when they send me notes or emails and handwrite things, want photos with me and tell me how much it mattered to them, it's so fulfilling and so unbelievable that... It's tough for me to even comprehend. And I'm emotionally and physically exhausted when I leave those speaking engagements. And that's why, because I'm giving everything. And I had no idea what I would be given back. And it is, it's 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 overwhelming and fulfilling and amazing all at once. And I'm there to reach one kid. But if I can reach them all or a vast majority of them, my job is done. And well, I'm you, lucky to have it. You can get information on Josh, and I'll give you the websites very slowly again, and the websites are all available at ours, which is thisweekinamerica.us. Joshua Coburn has been our guest on the program, C-O-B-U-R-N, very simple website, joshuacoburn.com. All, and they can link up on that and get information on the Manners and Motivation Tour, mannersandmotivation.com. All the information there, how your school can participate, how the school your children go to can participate. If you're a teacher, get information on that. It's uh, it's something that's very affordable, and you can't even really put a price tag on what happens when you see the relationship between Josh and the students there and the fact that he's really got a powerful message that will end up, in fact, changing lives. Josh, congratulations on the, uh, the tour. We'll be checking in with you throughout the year. Uh, the book is Inspiration on Demand, and it's great, as always, to have you with us on the program. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Certainly our pleasure. You're listening to This Week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.